Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight from New York, New York, the city is so nice they named it twice. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the other coast of the United States we go, and of course to talk to the incredible Larry Bubbles Brown. Yay! Hello, Alex. Yes. How you doing? Another another painful death the past um, a week uh jessica walter yeah yeah i loved her on uh arrested development yeah and what she's i remember when i was a youngster how she scared the hell out of everyone and played misty for me <laughs> yes 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 but Which uh, was a, uh, we, I, let's see we lost one other person i'm trying to remember who we lost another last week uh, and and apparently they don't go in threes because no, uh, there wasn't a, there wasn't a third, but there was a second one. I'm trying to remember who. Oh well, isn't it amazing how every now and then you you go, uh, gee, are they still alive? You know. Yeah, yeah. So what I always do is I go to my um, Alexa, okay, and I ask, is so and so still alive? And then it tells me whether they aren't or they are. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, Echo, is Larry Bubbles Brown alive? <laughs> Here's something I found on the web. According to wikipedia.org, Brown died of an apparent heart attack at his home in the Yokona community near Oxford in November 2004. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, I guess I don't know who I'm talking to right now. <laughs> I uh, think that was an author named Larry Brown, the guy, because I remember he died of a heart attack. Yeah, but I asked for Larry Bubbles Brown. I didn't <laughs> ask for Larry Brown. You know. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Echo, is Alex Bennett alive? Echo, is Alex Bennett alive? Alex Bennett died in Scotland on January 9, 1940. He was 58 years old when he died. Well, this is a very uh, existential conversation. Yes, I mean, a dead person is talking to a dead person, and didn't we both die in Scotland, I think? <laughs> See, maybe that's what happened. You die, but you don't really know you die. <laughs> it, 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 that, you know, that could be. I mean, how do you know when you're dead? You know? Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, I mean, I, I who knows what happens once you die? You know, you know what scared me the other day about death? Here we go, folks. It's Larry Bubbles Brown and Alex Bennett discussing death. You know what I read about death the other day? That when you die, you actually are still alive. And you still are aware of things for about two minutes after you die. Oh, really? Yeah. Ew. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> no, I don't like that either. You know, so. Ah, uh, boy. You know, just. Uh, well, you were talking about that guy that's in SAG that's 107 years old. I guess. Uh, Norman Lloyd. He's 100. I think yeah. he's, a, I think maybe 106, actually. Yeah. Well, you got to realize. But he can't uh, get insured by SAG <laughs> any <laughs> longer. <laughs> Boy, I've been talking to more and more SAG men. Well, you guys really got screwed. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Especially the seniors. You know. And apparently it just happened like overnight. Yeah. I mean, before at, at, in, in SAG, you had to do, make so much of an earnings in a given year in order to get their health insurance, so I never applied for it. But then all of a sudden I got these things saying, do you want our health insurance? Do you want our health insurance? And finally I got a hold of them and they said, Oh, yeah, as a senior, you don't have to make anything. You're just a senior member. You've been a member of AFTRA for a long time, and SAG. 
And, uh, we, you know, for $2,100 a year, you and your wife are insured with this incredible health plan. So I went, sure, sign, where do I sign up? You know, it's a supplemental plan to your, to your Medicare. And, uh, man, it was, it was terrific. And we just lost Larry Bubbles Brown. Let me call him back again. See what happened. Oh, Larry is unavailable. What is this? Something happened there? Let me try him again. Here we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but, uh, you know, we use Skype for this, and who knows what's going on with Skype these days. Anyway, it was a great plan, you know, and all of a sudden they say, oh, we're not going to start doing it. We're going to stop doing it after the first of the year, and this was like in October, Right, so now you had to hustle around to find another plan, and it was yeah. just—it was just horrible, and it's horrible for a lot of people. I mean, and we're paying now. I mean, Marjorie's business or company is going to pay for our insurance, but between our prescription and our personal insurance, you know, the the doctors and so on, uh, we're paying about th about three times what we were paying per year. You know. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, my union, who I belong to for, uh, I don't know, ever since I was in New... Where did I first join it? I guess when I was in Chicago. And uh, uh, that was like uh, 1969 or something like that. I've been a member of this union for how many years? So 50 years. And I even, I even remained a member of the union while I wasn't in need of belonging to the union. Like all those times I worked in San Francisco... There was never a station I worked at that was a union station. Not that they were scab stations, but they weren't union stations. In other words, they legitimately had a vote taken and nobody wanted the union in there. So, you know, so I, I, I but I still maintained my membership. You know, so it really pissed me off. Well, it's, uh, God, uh, someone was telling me you were talking to Will recently about or maybe Deb about the cost of his medical was just so far his medical he about a year and a half ago folks in case you are not aware Wilders who is a fine fine political comedian and a great guy and a great guy uh, had a had a stroke uh, and of course that wound him up in the hospital for a year and a half two million dollars so far Jesus two million dollars now, you know, I don't think anybody expects to get that anymore. Because let's say you're not insured. Let's start there. Do they really think they're going to be able to collect it? <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. You don't, some people don't earn that much in a lifetime. Okay? So, uh, so that's ridiculous right then and there. Then when it becomes a point that the uh, insurance has to pay for it, they only pay pennies on the dollar to these people. These people are asking for the highest price. You know, they're charging $80 for an aspirin. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it, it's a whole, it's a whole, uh, what do we call it, a whole racket, as it but were. But the whole the health care system is just fucked up beyond repair. Well, any other country, you know, I, I, I had a friend who lived in, in uh, uh, Canada, and I said, so... Uh, how do you pay for your medical and, uh, you know, your, your health care? And they said, we don't. We never worry about it. You get sick, you go to the hospital. You leave, you don't get a bill. What? <laughs> Where do I sign up for that? Become a Canadian. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's too big a price to pay, but, you know, I mean... <laughs> But, I mean, it, 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 imagine that. Uh, there, there was a, who was it that was doing a thing about getting sick in England? And, he, and even if you're, if you're like an American, you get sick in England, uh, you go to any of their hospitals, they'll take care of you. You're a guest in their country, and you're subject to their system. And he said after he was through with whatever happened in the hospital, he went to the... Um, uh, to uh, to somebody and said, where do I sign out? Where do I pay? And they said, pay? 
They said, we don't have a cashier here. You know? They didn't so, have know. a place for you to sign out and pay your pay whatever money. He didn't have to pay a penny. You know what they do have? They have a dispersal uh, uh, window where uh, they actually give you money if you had to take a cab or transportation to get to the hospital. Absolutely. And they also, uh, uh, the other thing is, is that they don't, you, you know, I mean, it, they, they don't really uh, uh, have a whole system set up for you to pay. So that's why foreigners don't pay, you know. And uh, But you can in England, you can have a private doctor. You know, you can have your own doctor if you want to pay for it. Okay. You know, but most people don't want it. Why? The best health care system they've got is national health. So, you know. But anyway, so my union fucked this over. You know, uh, it, 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 their attitude is call us when you get better. You know. Well, it, is the so the the union members aren't really trying to fight this? They, yeah, Ed Asner led oh, a really? coalition of people who are suing the union. Really? Yeah, wow, that's cool. who are suing the union. But you know, I'll be dead before that ever gets solved. Yeah. You know, I mean, I we need the help now. We don't need the help twenty years down the line. Ed Asner won't be alive. <laughs> He's, well, he's got to be 90. I think he is 90, actually. I think you hit the nail right on the head. Oh, uh, Rain Man. <laughs> well, ask, ask Alexa how old he is, and they'll, she'll say he's dead. Well, wait a minute. El, uh, uh, Echo, how old is Ed Asner? She, she doesn't know. It's just, how old is Ed Asner? Sorry, something went wrong. Yeah, I, I imagine. Echo, how old is Ed Asner? Edward Asner is 91 years old. 91. He was born on November 15, 1929. Hmm. See, he's 10 years older than I am. <laughs> yeah, so. Ed Asner. Yeah. Yeah, you can. You know what? You know what? I I I was thinking yesterday that you know I was watching a video on YouTube because I sit there watching one YouTube after another video, and it said like retro, whatever, and it was like a bunch of films about what it's going to be like in the future, and these were all done in the 1940s, okay, and one of them was this GE had this robot at the World's Fair, okay that would, uh, like, answer questions from you. And the guy's speaking into a microphone going, Electro, what time really? is <laughs> it? And then Electro would come back and say, It is... <laughs> I mean, it was terrible. And I'm thinking, I have my own Electro here with this, with this Amazon yeah. device, right? Which I won't name because if I name it... Uh, well, I can say Alexa because I don't have a program to respond to Alexa responds to the other word. And uh, uh, I can ask it almost any question. I can ask it to turn my lights on here in the, uh, in the, in the studio or in any room in the house. You know, it's amazing. Oh, oh, excuse me. Look who I'm talking to yeah. uh, about this. Uh, how do you turn your lights on? With my hand. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my dim sixty watt bulb. <laughs> <laughs> Living in a motel like Mickey Rooney. <laughs> the, the neon sign outside the window. Making noise, going yep, yep, yep. Oh boy, it, what, did Mickey Rooney live in a hotel? Uh, there was he was in some movie once where he played a guy who was living in. I just remember it, was, it looked cool. The neon sign was outside his window, and he was down on his luck. And yeah, and there that, was an interesting career, Mickey Rooney. Yeah, Mickey. At one point, most people don't realize this. Mickey Rooney, in case you're wondering who, look him up. Was the biggest star in the world. Well, as uh, Dana Carvey told me when they did a sitcom together, Mickey would occasionally just burst out, number one in the world, 
No, actually, for about three years running, oddly enough. Yeah, number one in the world. And he you wasn't. Went, was he a child? Well, like he was. He was a child 15. actor who then went and became a you know a, a in his twenties he did like kid parts because he was short, right? And he was the biggest star in the biggest star in the world, biggest star in the world, bar none. Hey, listen. With that, we've got to bring this to a close because your time is up. <laughs> Apparently, are, but we both are up. <laughs> yeah, eventually. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Larry bowles Brown. We'll talk to you next week, Larry. We will. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Larry Bowles Brown, always our favorite here on the uh, on the little program, our little uh, festival of of fun and whatever. Anyway, well, I seem to have all my video looking okay tonight, so it looks fine. Except my head is is not fitting in there right. But who cares? The people listening to us on audio only are lucky because they don't have to put up with all the little technical glitches that we have that go on every now and then. Um, uh, let me see here. Anything happened today? Uh, um, nah, not really. Uh, no, we, hey, listen, there, uh, well, there is something. We can all take airplanes now. CDC has said it is safe for people who have the, uh, the, um, uh, uh, their shots. Okay. I feel like a dog when they say, do you have your shots? Um, uh, but the shots uh, that they, uh, have. Uh, if you, you get a little card, you know, that says that you've taken all of them. If you've taken all of them, you can get on an airplane safely without risk of catching COVID. But they urge you to keep wearing masks and socially distancing. Now, I don't know if the airlines, when they have a full plane, if they involve themselves in social distancing, they care more about making money than your health. Okay, but that's uh, the uh, good news that we got today from the CDC, who every day gives us lots of bad news, but lately they've been giving us better news. I've got a plan, though. See, here's what I think. I think that uh, there's, there's this reluctance for people to get um, the, uh, the shots, okay, because they have a hesitancy about getting the vaccination. But if you make it impossible for people to go into a sporting event or to go into a theater, or to go uh, to a nightclub, or whatever, unless they have the proper documentation that they've had the vaccination, then I think people, will, more people, will go out and get it because they don't want to. They want to be able to go to the baseball game, and they say what they're going to do at baseball games is they're going to have a section for people who have been vaccinated, so they can all sit next to each other. They don't have to be separated or socially distanced. Uh, so this is all good, you know. But if they, what they should do is just not let anybody into a theater, a movie theater, or let them into a nightclub, or let them into a rock concert, or anything like that, unless they've been vaccinated, unless they've had the full series of vaccinations. That makes sense? I think it does. Okay. Anyway, I think uh, there are only two people waiting here. But what the heck? I don't care. We'll uh, we'll go to our uh, our citizen panel anyway. Uh, let me see here. Uh, are they? I well, I, I thought I hit it mid all, but I didn't I hit it hard enough. Okay, and uh, there we go. There comes our. Uh, there's uh, there's Charlie. He's there, and uh, Trucker Steve is there, and precious little other people. So to hell with them, right? Just us. How you doing, guys? Two people waiting here. Wait, wait a minute. The, Charlie's got to get his audio off. Are you okay now, hey, Charlie? Uh, yeah, yes, uh, trucker. I Steve. wanted to. I was reading on the internet today. There was a shooting in Orange County. Mm -hmm. uh, four people died, including a nine-year-old yeah. kid. Yep. And it said since. Oh, now he froze up. The Atlanta shootings. Uh, two yeah. weeks ago? Yeah. That's the 20th mass shooting in two weeks. 20th mass two shooting? Two fucking weeks. Yeah. 20th yeah. mass shooting in two Welcome weeks. Welcome to America. 
Welcome to America. That's oh, ridiculous. It, it, that's pretty terrible, isn't it? You know, it's pretty horrible. Uh, I guess that's they, when they count uh, mass shooting. That's when uh, there's more than two people killed. I it, I, like I guess I guess four. a mass shooting but, is more than two people, or maybe I, more than four people shot. It, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean three isn't a mass shooting? Wait a minute. Do you know anything about this, Josh? About what is what constitutes a mass shooting? Is it two or more, or three or more, or four or more, or how many? I don't know the criteria on that. I'm sorry. I would say at least. I, I mean, I think. Hey, I consider one shooting a mass shooting. You know, uh, but you know, we had a shooting today of a policeman in Washington D.C. as well. So you got to add that to the number. I mean. Not to the mass shooting number, but to the number of, of, of shooting deaths within a certain period of time, and it's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty kind of yeah, amazing. Yeah, I don't I don't know what's defined as a mass shooting. Uh, FBI, I think, is the one who compiles those statistics. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's a you know if there's a number or something like that. I I would assume. Part of what they track is, you know, like if it's people that you know or people that you don't know, you know, I don't know if that makes a difference. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some people, mass shootings have involved killing of yeah. total strangers and other times it's acquaintances, friends, family, that kind of thing. So right. I'm not... Right. Right. Uh, but I mean, it, uh, 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 you know, I mean, I, I, I this is going to keep going on. You know, how I, I. Am I wrong in a, in thinking something here, that some of these shootings happen simply because um, uh, the news reports them and makes a big deal out of them, and that causes more to happen? Does that make sense to you, uh, Charlie? Uh, yeah, I got a definition for you. Yeah, okay. According to Google... Crime Violence Research Group Gun Violence Archive says uh, def defines a mass shooting as four or more people shot and or killed in a single event. So you have to have four people shot, whether they die or not, in order for it to be a mass shooting. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, there you have it. How many? But we we've had twenty. You say, uh, Trucker Steve. Yeah. Yeah. We've had twenty. By the way, you yeah. know what we never point out? We always bring we always bring up Charlie as uh uh as a uh, as Doctor Doom. But we never make a big deal out of his T shirts and, and every day he's got a different how many T shirts do you own, Charlie? Oh, I don't know, about thirty or forty. I don't know. Like really? That. Yeah. Seems like you read have another one every night. Now that's how and then I roll. I roll, but what's the uh, every that's time the ball rolling down an incline, and that's the mathematical formula for figuring out the acceleration of a ball rolling down an incline. That's how I roll. Okay, yeah. all right. Yes, you had your hand up, Steve. Oh, you didn't. Oh, okay. All right. So, well, what's happening, uh, uh, Charlie, in our in our uh, doom report? Actually, it's a little better today. Only 895 Americans died. Only 895 Americans died, of which 50, no, 63 of them were in New York State. Wow. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're kind of, I don't know, we're, 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 in a, we're in a goofy position here with this. Uh, it, 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 it's, um, let's see here. Uh, as of this, let's see here. Um, COVID hospitalizations dropped to 4,540. Uh, we have a 3.02% infection rate. Uh, there were 913 patients in an ICU yesterday, down five from the previous day. Of them, 565 are intubated, but we lost 63 New Yorkers to the virus. And that's up from 56 yesterday. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, you know, I used to love to brag that, hey, we didn't have a single death in New York State yesterday, right? I remember those days. Forget, yeah. forget that. It's all been changed, okay? 
Oh, here comes Jeff Stein. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me admit him to the group. Here comes Jeff. Um, okay, there he is. Hello, Jeff. How are you this evening? Uh, wait a minute. He's got a... You're muted. He, but he's not Your muted. Voice. Oh, there he is. Okay. How you doing? Hi, how are you doing there in Connecticut? Great. Yeah. Great. It was a nice, it was, a, was it a nice day? It was a cold day today. I was going to go out and... I, <clears throat> You know, I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to walk again, and I, because I have hard time walking, I'm, my legs are atrophying from not going mm -hmm. out enough, and I uh, uh, wanted to go out today. And I looked at my watch, which has the temperature on it, and sure enough, the temperature was uh, 35 degrees or something. And I went, mm -hmm. "Well, screw that! I ain't going out in that." Yeah. Oh, well, it's 27 for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it a nice mm. yeah. cold day today? Wait a minute. John Larkin's got the audio on. No, I don't. Oh, you don't? No. Well, somebody <laughs> did. Oh. Well, we only have half your face, John. Yeah. We see half your head. Only half your head. There we go. Okay. There's your. <laughs> there. Now he gave us head. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, I, uh, you know, I. Uh, um, I don't know. I just uh, I, I've been I, I've been also just I've been I've been tired. I've just been tired, and I think the tiredness that we have is COVID fatigue. I think we have just been indoors so much, you know, that uh, you just tired. I'm tired all the time. Mm -hmm. I never feel why. Do you feel that way, Jeff? You get to feel that way, right? Same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I Quite often. About twenty pounds. You put on about 20 pounds, so have I. So yeah. have I, yeah. yeah, yeah. They say that the average person gained, yeah. uh, I can't remember what the amount is, but it is uh, some incredible amount of weight. Uh, something like the average American has gained 15 pounds in the last year. Yeah. Okay, so. I've lost the weight. You've lost weight? Yep. Why? I just decided to eat less. I don't eat that much. I eat very little, as a matter of fact. I have a, I may have a lunch or a breakfast, but very seldom. If I do, it's just a couple of sausages. And then for dinner, like tonight, I had some meatballs and some um, low-carb spaghetti or fettuccine, which was just... I decided to send away for this low-carb... Uh, um, uh, this low-carb... Um, fettuccine oh. and uh, it, it supposedly is low carb and it is it's like three carbs per serving and there are two servings in each package so that's pretty good there's just one downside to it it tastes <laughs> like shit <laughs> that's right. it tastes like plastic and I had to spend 20 bucks to find this out right mm. Terrible, just terrible. It tastes like uh, tastes like. How can I discuss? It, it isn't how it tastes. It doesn't taste terrible, but it has the texture of a rubber band. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I think those companies like Grubhub, you know, that deliver food and whatever the other ones, mm -hmm. you know, they're they're valued on Wall Street billions of dollars. But those are the worst fucking companies because. What they do is they, like, say you order from some restaurant online, right? Mm -hmm. So they send somebody to the restaurant to pick the food up. Then they take it back to a central place in your in, in, in the neighborhood somewhere yeah. where another guy comes and gets it. By the time it gets to you, it's fucking cold, yeah. you know? And, and the poor guy that delivered it, he got paid six bucks, you know, or ten bucks maybe. And, and the dudes that own the company are billionaires. It's just... Not well, right. if I, if I, I've never ordered, have I ever ordered from Grubhub? I don't think so. But if I did, and my food came cold that often, I would never order from them again. Oh, that's what I don't understand. You yeah. know, yeah. I know that, that the Chinese seem to have the, the, uh, the problem solved because for years they've been delivering food yeah, and yeah. their food always comes hot. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, and pizza, pizza places are pretty good too because they've always mm -hmm. delivered, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You like pizza? I like it. Yeah. I, I don't like pizza. Mm. I don't like I'm pizza. I'm American. Hmm? 
I, I like good pizza, shitty pizza I don't like. Some well, pizza's shitty. Well, I used to, when I was a kid, I used to go to, my parents used to take me to Italian restaurants, and they had pizza, and it was like this really thin crust pizza. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, you had to kind of double it over in order to put it in your mouth, otherwise it just went boom, like that, right? And that I liked. But then they went to this thick crust, thick sides and all of that, and mm -hmm. I, that sucks. I, it, it's just too much dough for me. You know, I you get a lot of dough and some sauce and some cheese and maybe some whatever else you have put on there, but it's basically it's dough. What? Yeah, you should go in in Connecticut, mm -hmm. mostly in the New Haven area, mm -hmm. where they they make the kind of pizza that's yeah. real thin. Okay. Probably what you like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, you know, if I'm going to get thick pizza, then I will get a deep dish pizza, uh, like Uno makes and so on, uh, where where there's it's it it's thick crust, but you also have a lot of the sauce and a lot of the stuff in the middle because it's like a deep mm -hmm. dish pizza. But a lot of meat, a lot well, of meat. Yeah, you like your meat pro products in your pizzas? Oh yeah. Yeah. No, nothing like I'm a carnivore. Oh yeah, no. I mean, I want my 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 combination is I like uh, uh, what do you call it? Hamburger, uh, sausage. Um, let's see here. What else? Mushrooms. Okay, that's about it for me. You know, um, mm -hmm. uh, no. I don't like pepperoni. I'm not crazy about pepperoni. But what's your favorite? Uh, uh, Jeff, do you have a favorite? Uh, pepperoni. <laughs> <Yeah>. Pepperoni? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, uh, how about you? Do you get? Do you like pizza, uh, J Josh? Yeah. You do. And what do you I, what do you like on your pizza? Uh, we I normally just get pepperoni, but I'll eat a few other things on there. Mo mostly meat. I don't I don't do crazy pizzas like I like ham yeah. and pineapple. What? You what? Can... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you out of your it. fucking <laughs> mind? Yeah. <laughs> there is a, anybody I've who never understood pineapple on pizza, but I good. suddenly realized when I moved back to California, all the Italians must have moved out because you go to a a, a, a pizza, get a pizza, and they uh, what would you, uh, 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 would you like pineapple on that? What? <laughs> it's, that's not a pizza. That <laughs> too. I like it. What you like it, Tony? My brother treated me to Vegas and he yelled at me. I says, I like this pizza. He says, It's fucking pineapple. He says, That's not pizza. He said exactly what you said. And all I was doing was eating the pizza kitchen topics because we didn't have it in New York. So he treated me out there when he worked for Verizon. He took me along. And all I was doing every day for lunch was trying another topping. He says, Aren't you? I, said, I don't get this in New York. And I said, This is a while ago. Jeez <laughs> almighty. Yeah, I was oh. a sucker, Alex. You would have yelled at me. So he says, Is this what I'm paying for? He said, <laughs> It was cheap, though, so he didn't Well, I, I moved to, uh, when I left California, I think I still could get a fairly decent pizza. Then I came out to New York for about 10 years, and I went back home, and here's all these, like, pineapple pizzas and granola pizzas, and, 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 uh, I don't that. I, it was all right. I like meatballs on my pizza and, like, onions and stuff. Yeah. I want to be a little crazy, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I like onions. Exactly. So, uh, you know, uh, listen, we got another state, by the way, is your, your state, uh, by the way, uh, uh, Charlie. Why is it that I, every time I have to put down a state, it's usually Texas? <laughs> you said it in there. Because Texas, <laughs> Texas sucks. Hmm? They want bad news, Charlie. Then why are you, you there? Why are you I'm there? I'm here for the weather. Huh? <laughs> I'm here for the weather. It's 75 degrees and sunny today. That's all. Oh, I'm you here. like you like the summers with full moisture? Oh, I love it. I'll take the no. I don't have moisture. I'm in Austin. We, well, I'll take 110 and sunshine. Man, man. I, I lived in Houston for, I think it was two years, three years, something like that. Yeah, Houston. And, and I I never could keep a crease in my pants. <laughs> it's got to be really hot out. It's got to know. Yeah, it's just it's humid. You go, you go from your air conditioned apartment, yeah. run to your air conditioned oh, I car. Couldn't I couldn't do it. And then drive to an air conditioned, <laughs> I don't know, restaurant or air conditioned. I would never leave the house. In the and, 
you never very seldom do you leave, do you keep yourself out in that moisture for very long. Yeah. I see why you like San Francisco because when I went there with my brother, mm -hmm. it, the weather is perfect. That well, nice it, it, it's, it, it's perfect up to a point. It never gets too cold and it never gets too hot. Like you never really need the air conditioner, right, out there? Well, it's I all, could. I it's call, always miserably cold in San Francisco. It's horrible. Well, no, I always I refer, like that I way, referred to yeah. San Francisco as America's only air conditioned city. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, because there's always that certain hint of moisture in the air. But, you know, you got to admit, nothing more romantic when the fog rolls in. I was yeah. watching the baseball, yeah, you when we went to the game. Thing. Oh, yeah. I couldn't do it short. I couldn't do it. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's, uh, it, 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 it very seldom does it go over about 90, and very seldom does it go below 50. Okay. Yeah, it, it, was, it was nice yesterday. It was about 80, and then today it's like 50. See, yeah, I like that weather. I was yeah. gonna say it. It's always like in the sixties every time I like I've it, been yeah. to San Francisco. You don't have to worry about shorts yeah. or nothing. You just put your pants on. Sixties is too cold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sixty yeah. is. Have to wear a jacket all the time it's in July. Time. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least I didn't have. I could keep the same clothes ready. You know. Yeah, that's what I was gonna here, say. Here keep... in New York, you've got your summer clothes and you've got your winter clothes. And when winter, when summer comes, you take all your winter clothes and put it in the closet because you're not going to use it till winter. And then all of a sudden, you uh, winter comes and you go, "Where's my heavy coat? And where's my jacket? And where's my sweaters?" And you know, here we go. Um, but basically, because of COVID, I've just never gotten out of my pajamas in about a year. So yeah, I, I call them leisure now. I like to walk. When I come home, my brother came in because I was like, what are you doing? As soon as I come back from the post office, I put my pajamas on. Like my, I call them leisure well, pants. Well, you know, these things, these things is what I'm talking about. Let's you, see. Got can, can, you, can you see it at all? Uh, oh, gee, I can't get my they leg up high enough. Oh, well. Uh, but uh, oh. it's, uh, it's, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 it's it's like you know, the pajama pants is what yeah. they are. Sweatpants. You know, you got red and and white boxes. Hmm. <laughs> you have a little box. Yeah, little plaid yeah. pants. Yeah, plaid pants. pants. Wait a minute, like, I I I just can't get my pants. Up. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> They're comfortable. Yeah. I've had these on. Well, not this pair. I've got maybe uh, twenty different pair of them. Or I something. got a lot too. Yeah, I but them. this is what has been my. Go to clothing for the COVID crisis, you know. How about you, Charlie? Do you wear these? Yeah, I wear. I wear. Well, I have several pair. I've just got gray ones on right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. How about you, uh, uh, Jeff? No, it's too damn cold. Really? Um, well, yeah. that's why you wear these. They're warm. Yeah, because they. Yeah. I have shorts to wear during the summertime. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How about you? Uh, shorts, uh, but it's not shorts time. How about you, uh, John? Same thing? Yeah, sometime. But I, right now I got my Levi's on because I went out today. But sometimes. Mm -hmm. hey, is, there, is, there, is there something big on TV tonight? Because the uh, numbers of people watching us is very low. And I've only got like five people here. It's 24-7 Gates on MSNBC. What? Well, also, it's the premiere of Godzilla versus that King is. Kong. My brother's That's why Brian's not here. That's Brian is watching that tonight. Yeah, it's, it's Friday night movie night for the nearest. Oh boy! This is Tired of this news about Matt Gates. I'm just like, look when they when they perp walk him, let me know. But yeah, in the meantime, I'm, I'm sick of hearing about it. <laughs> I'm not sick of hearing about it. Every time I see his ugly face, I go, eh, he's going to be pretty enough to get butt fucked in prison. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's going to happen is this guy in Minneapolis uh, is uh, Chauvin. Uh, he's probably going to get found guilty. I, 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 if I had money on it, I guess that's where I'd have to bet. Uh, but if they ever put him in prison, they've got to put him in like, you know, oh. uh, he, he, they can't put him in general population yeah. ever, ever, uh, because you know, but, the shit, but, uh, but Matt the Gates, shit. I think should just be put in general population. He's really pretty. He's got a pretty mouth, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he'd be just perfect, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, 
Why is it, let's ask Josh this. Josh, why is it that it's always the Republicans that seem to be caught with their pants down like this? I mean, that's the kind of stuff they're into, man. They, uh, you know, yeah. that's I mean, a thing. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, you think some Democrats, well, of course, we've got Cuomo, but the worst he is even being accused of is maybe touching a woman's breast over the top. Okay, mm-hmm. not even under the blouse. Didn't he pinch him on his cheeks? They went know, a lot of yeah. look Republicans. You know they court the hardcore religious right and the uh, Christian community and older folks and stuff like that. I don't, I don't really believe in all that. Remember that the, uh, stuff they espouse. They just court them for votes, and that's a fairly gullible group. So yeah, but then what remember happened? The congressman what? that that. That that said, he, he was in a in a bathroom and he was trying to pick up on somebody. Oh, yeah, his wide stance. Yeah, I got the wide stance. <laughs> yeah. I can't even remember that guy's name. I don't either. <laughs> but uh, he but he was a crack up. <laughs> yeah, he was a good one. He was a good one. Uh, oh, I have a wide stance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I I have no idea why it's why why the Republicans get caught with their pants down like this. I guess. What it is is sexually repressed. Well, it's sexually repressed. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's why I would never run for public office. I mean, you know, if uh, if uh, coming on to a woman is a capital is a capital offense, then I'm going to get executed. You know, Uh, I mean, I spent my. I mean, I you you woo the babes. That's what you did. You know. That's why I feel so. While I, why I kind of have a soft spot in my heart for um, uh, Cuomo, it's just simply because he was brought up in a time period where, hey, you know, you, as the term went, you pitched woo, right? You know, you you came on to women. You 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 di- you didn't want to be forceful. That was. You didn't want to make them feel uncomfortable. That would be wrong. But certainly, you attempted to see if they were interested in you. Yeah. And, it, you know, and uh, if I ever made a woman co- uncomfortable, uh, I would feel very bad about it, you know, because I, that, that was never, ever my intention. Uh, but uh, it, 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 a guy like Cuomo was brought up in a certain period of time where, hey, you know, you you pursued the ladies, as it were. And now... When I came in, hmm? when I came in, were you talking about Larry Craig, Senator? Larry Craig. Oh, that was yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. In, in a, yeah, I looked him up here. Well, Larry, dance. June 11, 2007, he got arrested. A senator from Idaho, a Republican But wasn't senator. it in a Minneapolis restroom? Minneapolis St. Paul Airport, International mm. Airport. Restroom. <clears throat> so interestingly is I went to a street <clears throat> fair three or four days later in San Francisco. That was just a street fair. Mm-hmm. And all the porta potties, somebody had printed out sponsored by Larry Craig. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's good. Yeah. Just an average street fair in San Francisco or is it one with the uh, with the uh, ass chaps? Uh, yeah, I don't remember. Uh, I went with a girlfriend of mine. Yeah, it might have been. Let's see if that was June. The end of June is the uh, gay pride parade. Might have been that. I don't know. I'm, it's a little well, bit. Well, no, there's one other thing. It isn't the gay pride <clears throat> parade, but it is a affair in the mission. You know what I'm talking about, John? Yeah, the Folsom Street Fair. Folsom Street Fair. Yeah, that yeah, one. That's not in the where, mission. Where, it's where, the market. where you, you go down there and uh, you're going to see more people in wearing chaps <laughs> with no pants on. You're yeah. just jealous. What do you mean I'm just <laughs> jealous? What am I jealous of? That people have an ass? I don't know. No. No. I think I, it's not my thing. Um, you know. But there is a lot of nudity at the uh, Folsom Street Fair. Oh, there's a lot of it. And, uh, women of and it. men, yeah. you know? Yeah. But it's always the wrong women, you know? It's the, yeah. the ones it's, that weigh 700 pounds. It's always know? the wrong uh, men, too, if you ever noticed. Yeah. Yeah, pretty hot women there, I'll tell you. 
I, I've seen some real hot women there. Yeah, I thought I saw you once before, John. <laughs> I've been to it a few times, but I'm well, it's kidding. a pretty, it's a pretty horrible day for a person who's straight, though. Yeah, it is because there's nobody there that's going to be interested in you. If they're gay, they're, if they're guy, they're not interested in you, and if they're a woman, they're not interested in you. So in California, before COVID, it was the third largest single day event in the state. First is the Rose Bowl, Rose Bowl in mm -hmm. Pasadena. Yeah. Second is the Gay Pride Festival in San Francisco. And third is the Folsom Street Fair, a number of people. Yeah, yeah. they didn't have one last year. Uh, that's what I said, before COVID. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. before COVID. Uh, they didn't cancel it for AIDS, though. That's yeah, the interesting it's, part about it's it. It's a little different. They actually got a lot of extra money. They, they, they collect money at the gate, $5 to get in or something like yeah. that. And, and that money goes towards charities. Yeah, well, no, it's a, it's a you know it's a it's a very big day in San Francisco. Yeah. It is, it is. They uh, closed all the bathhouses in the eighties uh, because of because AIDS. of AIDS because of AIDS. And that that's where all the bathhouses were. Were all south of Market. That was like you know. I, don't I remember know. one time when I was, I guess I was about twenty years old, and I was, I was at a I was at a friend's house, and we were getting loaded, and I didn't really know this guy who lived at the house, but. There's a bunch of us, and this guy goes, "Hey, you want to go to, go up to San Francisco to the Mabuhay Gardens and see the dead Kennedys?" So I said, "Yeah, sure." And I had a car; he didn't have a car, so I drove up there with him, and uh, we were partying, getting doing drugs, and getting loaded. And then at the end of the night, he goes, "Well, I know a place where we can get laid." And I was like, "Really?" And he's going, "Yeah, come on." So he takes me to this place. You know, I didn't know I didn't know nothing about bathhouses, and he pays for it and. We go in there, and I'm like, hey, wait a second. <laughs> what did I get into? <laughs> you know? So yeah. I just kind of kind of grabbed a, a dark corner and hung out and <laughs> tried to avoid the scene. <laughs> How many people did you get laid with? <laughs> <laughs> None. Yeah, I know that feeling. What, I've, never, my, I've what, never been in one of those, but, uh, you know, I knew they existed. They're still in the Bay Area. They're just not in San Francisco. Now, I, uh, uh, let me talk to Kevin a second, because I was talking to him. We get together on sometimes on Saturday nights and talk to a couple of us talk with each other. Uh, it has, doesn't get broadcast or anything like that. It's a private conversation. Sure. A and he was, he called from his, uh, what, that's an RV, right, that you have? Yeah, fifth wheel. Fifth wheel. Oh, wow. Um, and, and it was... I, you called from it. I thought you were calling from your kitchen initially because it looked mm -hmm. like it could be your kitchen. kind of was. And you had gone down to Arizona, right? Yeah, I was in uh, Mesa. In Mesa, Arizona. And uh, you, uh, you, you drove all the way out there and so that your daughter could pick up a car that your What? My father-in-law was given to her, yeah. Yeah. So she yeah. she got the car and drove it back, okay? Yeah, my wife drove it back. Oh, okay. Is yeah. she she can't drive yet? You no, know? not yet. Oh, okay. So she's got well, a. We car. didn't go through L.A. that time. We, we 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 took the back route up three ninety five. We didn't. We still spent twelve and a half, thirteen hours on the road, but we didn't have to go through L.A. I didn't make that mistake twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, so uh, you but you uh, you came back on what? Tuesday, I think you came back. Yeah, yeah. Tuesday. I, I think you called us maybe Wednesday or Tuesday. Uh, called you on Saturday. Right? No, 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 no. But but for the show here. Oh, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And I forgot to ask you about it. It was about two thirds of the night. So was the trip nice back? Yeah, it was just long and windy. Yeah. Well, I mean, and also you were in the car. You were in the the uh, camper by yourself or the RV by yourself, right? No, oh, all no. three of us were. No, no, but coming back. Oh, coming back, yeah, I was by myself. Yeah, because they, they took the, the car. Yeah, they drove in the car behind me. And I might, I, I'd say I would get very bored driving that stretch of m miles without uh, having somebody in the car with me or in so the van. So I just with replayed uh, Gabnet and keep me awake. <laughs> <laughs> you replayed Gabnet to keep you awake? <laughs> Most people Are you kidding me? 
Just kidding. Yeah, I figured you were just kidding. <laughs> Gee. You know, I don't know. I, uh, I, I, I don't, because I don't mind driving, so it didn't bother me at all. He's yeah. a trucker. He drives all the time. Well, what I was going to say is you have been a trucker, so this is just, you're used to that sort of thing. Just another day, yeah. Yeah. It, just, it, it reminded me of uh, the days, you know, Steve knows. So, just remind, and it was funny because Steve said he was in uh, Los Banos last night, which is about a stone's throw away from here. Right. I'm in Lodi tonight. What's that? I'm in Lodi, the Flying oh, okay. J. Okay, yeah, that's where I'm going next week. Okay, in uh, Lodi again. Yeah. Yep. And are you in your way? You gonna, when are you going to get go back to Canada? Lodi is only about two hours away from where he was last night. Yeah. When, when, when are you going back to Canada? Uh, after my 36. So uh, break, like I leave uh, Sunday morning. Oh, oh okay. so you're really stuck in Lodi. So, so you've got yeah, it. I'm setting my hours. Yeah. You got Where it. Are you at the? Are you at the five or the ninety nine? Uh, the five. Uh, yeah. So you're at the tra the 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 uh, flying J. The loves flying J. Okay. Yeah, I think flying I J. was in Lodi once overnight. I I I was coming back from Yosemite. Would that make sense? Uh, no, it's too far north. Then where was I? Something, some place around there. Probably like, uh, not Modesto, Stockton. Yeah, and I might have even been with Shecky now that I'm thinking about it. And we'd gone to Yosemite, and then we stopped, and we needed to, we were tired, so we booked into the cheapest motel we could find. And I pull into this motel, and uh, we go to sleep. I wake up the next morning. And uh, I don't know what town we were in, but it wasn't anything that gave you a very dramatic feeling, okay? <laughs> and I open up the window, and there is the most beautiful view out the window. <laughs> it's like uh, trees and a babbling brook and mountains, and I'm going, this is incredible. And then it all started to move, and it turned out it was the side of a truck. <laughs> and what was in back of it was just asphalt. <laughs> you know? So I, I have a question, Kevin. If Lodi is farther north out of Yosemite, and then you mention Sacramento, which is even farther north than Lodi, right? right? No, I didn't mention Sacramento. Who did? Stockton. Somebody said Sacramento. Stockton. Oh, Stockton. But isn't, isn't Stockton north of Lodi? No, Stockton oh. is south, and then you go Modesto is south of that. Are you? Yeah, okay. are, I, I, I don't know about well, you. Modesto is more what you'd go through it, actually south of Modesto to get to <clears throat> Yosemite. I don't know about you, but in California, uh, there are, are I, every now and then I will hear about a, a town in California. And... Um, I've never heard of it. Do you ever hear of, of towns all of a sudden you never heard of? Yeah. Sure. And, sure. and it, yeah. like it, it sometimes when they're having these uh, forest fires and stuff, they go, "Oh, and yeah. this town just burned down." Right? Paradise. Go, I, yeah, the paradise. The I, did you ever hear of paradise before that? No. 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 I got family that lived up there. Megalia, oh. right next to it. Megalia. Wow. I've never heard of Megalia. Yeah, I had family. Mm -hmm. And I was born and raised in California. Me too. I've lived here my whole life. But there's so many little towns in California. Big you know. state, guys. It's a big state, yeah. but it also, it, it you know. But by the way, do you hear what they're doing out there? Uh, the California is lightening up on uh, people hanging out in groups places, re uh -huh. reopening theaters and uh, venues and so on? Not in Santa Clara. County. Not in Santa Clara. Okay. No, they're, they're in the they're in Orange, like most of the Bay Area right now, and uh, they just sent out a message. Their health department said, just because bars and restaurants are open, you shouldn't be in there. I'm, I figure they're probably talking about the people that have not been vaccinated. Yeah. Well, I uh, you know you, open. <laughs> yeah yeah well you know what um uh <clears throat> they're doing here is they're starting to open up stuff. And they're saying that uh, uh, you can have so many percentage of people in a place. They're doing that if, here, so. if you don't, you know, if you let anybody in. If you only make it available to people who have those cards that say they've been vaccinated, then it's like 
35 percent instead of 20 percent um yes charlie well in texas you you can go anywhere anytime it's the only state where all the baseball stadiums full capacity oh, ranger stadium houston ball i mean full capacity fifty thousand <clears throat> people no problem yeah but there, nobody's showing up there's only like <laughs> yeah, 10, people that'll go <laughs> Yeah, no, not all crazy. We're not it's all like, uh, suicidal. In Oakland right now, I'm watching Oakland. They're playing right now. They probably got, it looks like, at most 10,000 people there. Yeah. Now, that's, still, that's still a lot of people. Yeah, know. but that's a big Where thing. I live in Ontario, yeah. they're going back in the lockdown at midnight. They're going back. Oh, really? Yeah. That bad? Yeah, I, I when I was in Arizona, they were, they were wide open. They were opening everything up. and It's and it's too early you, to you do that. A, I went to go to Camping World to get some stuff for the trailer, and it says, you know, don't enter without a mask and all that stuff. And I thought, okay. <laughs> I got in there, and people got masks hanging off their ears and nobody wearing masks. And, really? You know, it, it was like they didn't give a shit about anything. Well, I and just. That was at any store I went to. My problem is, is that I, uh, um, uh, that they're, what they're doing here in New York, I think is a good idea. What I would do is I, because there's, you know, what they call vaccine hesitancy, where people don't want to get the vaccines, is you give them incentive to get a vaccine. Hey, you don't have one of these cards, you don't get into a restaurant. You don't have one of these cards, you can't go into a movie theater. You don't have one of these cards. You can't go to a baseball game. You can't go to a football game. You know, you can't do anything except stay home. You want to be able to come into the par ballpark and watch a game? Great. Show us your card. And well, I one think of your friends goes on eBay, buys a hundred of the cards for fifty bucks, <laughs> and all their friends have the cards. Well, there's a little difference though. What's we the have, difference? Uh, they didn't get the vaccine. We didn't uh, hear the end of it on Fox News either. Yeah, but here, right. you know, here's what I have here, and that's uh, yeah, yeah. I got my. I got to get mine. Yeah. yeah, and then I don't you, have that. I just yeah. took a picture of you my see card. That? You see, I it would no, card. but they shouldn't make it the card. They should make it this. The reason being that you could, I suppose, maybe forge the card. You could like you know, you do a card and make it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right? Uh, I think you're right. They haven't done that in California, as far as I know. Yeah, I mean, you can fake a card. Somebody could get a whole bunch of those cards, and then you just <clears throat> fill them out, you know, put your name on it and pretend like somebody just uh, filled it out and whatever. Absolutely. Yeah, but well, with this kind of thing, with this kind of thing, it actually goes to the database of the city and the state and says, okay, this is what it says. It says you're mm -hmm. okay to go. And then we show that, you, you show that, and uh, it should, uh, it, you know, and they have a version of it that you can download that's printable as well. Uh, and you can take that around with you. And you have that, okay, as many people who have those cards can get into a movie theater. You know, yeah. wear the masks, let's mm -hmm. remain safe. But, you know, and that would give people the incentive to get the shot. You know, they go, well, you know, if I'm going to be an outsider, I don't want to be. So, you know. But... Uh, uh, but these states that are opening up right now, it's insane. It's just yep. insane. You know, and, and I feel sorry for Charlie. I mean, Charlie, you must be afraid to go out because there's... Well, I'm vaccinated now. Vaccinated. You know, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're vaccinated, and so am I, but I'm still afraid to go out because, you know, there are the variants, and you're only 95% protected, okay? Uh, um, so... so uh, what? Pfizer came out with a thing yesterday that was in media. Mm -hmm. I got about 15 texts on it and says that they're in real world, their vaccine's closer to 90% overall. Mm -hmm. And it it's protecting against the variants right now. Moderna yeah. came out with something and said, in real world, their vaccine is 92%, but they're not sure about some of the variants. But I think maybe they're not sure about it because they haven't completely done their research on it. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I really don't. But yeah, yeah. and they but found the out they also don't get really sick even with the variants. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Yeah, 
The other thing is, but I don't even want to just get sick. I just don't want it at all. So I'm still being rather careful. We all are. You know, yeah. because yeah. there are a lot of people out there still not wearing the masks. You know, they're just, they're really stupid, you know. Well, they say they're not going to get sick, but they could get sick, not have problems, and get, you know, five other people sick. Well, what they're finding out is that group that didn't think, you know, the, the spring breakers, who thought they weren't going to get sick, they find that that age group is now being the most affected right. by Absolutely. getting it. You, know. you and do something stupid like that, you get what you get. But the other thing that's kind of interesting that they found, at least with the Pfizer, and I think probably the Moderna would be true. I mean, Fauci said that if it's true for the, the Pfizer, it's probably true also for Moderna, even though they haven't come up with, out with their statistics yet because they're pretty much similar in their nature and how they do what they do. And they said that um, uh, mothers who have been vaccinated, their children mm. are born with antibodies. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So go get your shot, folks. How about five? Everybody go get pregnant. <laughs> Everybody go get Somebody's pregnant. Somebody's getting pregnant tonight. Uh, well, John, we, John is in the right city for the, you know for men to come up with butt babies. We'll leave that up to Andrew Cuomo to handle. Um, yeah. So anyway, what about fathers. Yeah. So uh, um, you know, I, is there is there anything really happening politically out there to talk about? I mean, outside of the fact that, that well, you, well, you do have Atlanta, uh, Georgia, passing mm -hmm. that you know, voting law. And now they're not going to play the all-star game in Atlanta because they said it doesn't follow our, uh, our, our line of thought about things. And, you know, uh, we don't want to encourage that sort of thing. So we're not going to run the, uh, the all-star oh, game in, oh. in, 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 Vir in uh, uh, Georgia. Yes. Uh, John. Oh. Oh, yeah. Um, I was watching Fox and they're going, um, they're, they're uh, saying, oh, these companies that are coming against uh, or, you know, you know, like, was it Delta and Coca-Cola? Uh, yeah. They're saying, oh, they're hypocrites because they didn't do anything about China. I said, well, that's not an equivalent thing because you, you can't change China just by saying we're not going to sell our products there. But, uh, you know, they can change, the you know, well, the, it, the politics in, in To begin in with, you have to realize that uh, uh, that Atlanta is the home of Coca-Cola. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. and um, uh, so they've Delta. said they they they've come out and said they just don't like. I don't think they they're not going to sell Coca-Cola there, but they've said that they're they they don't support the uh, the law. You know, they find yeah. that it it goes against uh, the American well-being to be able to vote and and so on. Uh, the governor, of course, going. Oh, they're just bowing to pressure. Well, I don't think they're bowing to any pressure, you know. Uh, yeah, but those companies bring a lot of money into the state. Yeah. And, yeah, but what I'm know. saying is, is that if they, if if <clears throat> if they, if they didn't want to have people against them, then they wouldn't take a position either way. Okay. But the fact that they've taken a position, they know they're going to alienate a certain amount of people by doing it, and and uh, I mean. These states, I think these states are in for a world of hurt once any of these things goes to the Supreme Court. Yeah. What, what do you think, Josh? I mean, if, if I think they're already queuing up to get to the Supreme Court. On the, and now Texas has come up. What's your law in Texas? Uh, oh, it hadn't been passed yet. They're, they, they, they're, they've got about 20 bills in, in the Texas legislature. I thought that something passed today in Texas. Oh, well, if it happened today, I don't know about it. Yeah, yeah. Better internet for everybody in Austin. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I don't watch the news during the day. No, I heard Texas just passed some kind of draconian voting law. Well, they've been they've been uh, they've been talking about it for weeks. Yeah. They've been trying to pass it. How do you think these things are going to pass? Uh, it's going to be yeah. worse than the Georgia yeah. law. Wow. How do you feel these things are going to uh, fare in the Supreme Court, uh, Josh? Well, I mean, I think they're going to have trouble, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think they're going to have some some issues with, with some of that. 
I mean, I understand that parts of the the Voting Rights Act, you know, have been curtailed, but not the entire thing. I mean, there still are federal federal laws that protect voting rights in states, um, and you know, and they're a matter of law, mm -hmm. uh, and have been for a long time. So it's not as if they're really going to be suddenly considered unconstitutional. So I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think they'll have a lot of trouble. But look, if 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 some of these things go and not everything, I mean, sometimes with the court, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You know, yeah, yeah. they they could at times uh, only they could throw out, you know, nine out of 10 things or whatever. And one of them stays. I mean, you know, and people will be in such an uproar because of the court and all this. But listen. Blame your state legislatures and, and you know, don't well, I, 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 eight I or nine guys. Go, it's your fault. You yeah. folks live in these states. Uh, well, how do you think, for instance, let, let's look at a couple of these things. I can see where the Supreme Court would probably throw out the fact that you can't give people water who are waiting in line to vote, oh. you know. Uh, right. But what about the part of it that says they have to close all the polls at 5 o'clock in the afternoon? Oh, that's bullshit. Man. Well, I mean, that, that's going to be... You know, interesting because I mean the states do have the yeah. rights to run their own elections, as long as those rules, regulations, procedures, whatever, don't interfere or, you know, violate a, a federal statute or any constitutional right, you know, that you would have. Mm -hmm. So it's going to get tricky, you know, but. But I think a lot of them are going to have trouble. I mean, like you said, you know, I mean, it's going to be hard to justify any law that says you can't hand a bottle of water to another person on a public yeah. Is the side. Is the law that specific? You know? I mean, uh, yes, water. yes. Yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> I understand they say it's to, you know, prevent electioneering and all that. Well, then, if there is some... Uh, person out there watching and every time you hand a bottle of water out you say vote biden well then that okay then throw that guy out that that law is already on the books you know yeah. if you're handing out uh well you can you water, can't you can't you can't uh, you can't uh, 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 uh what's the word i'm looking for you can't uh, pull, uh, do make campaign, campaign uh, within I, like a hundred feet or two hundred so feet, feet of a, or whatever yeah. so i mean but look if you find a guy or whatever doing that well, that law's already on the book, been enforced that law, and I don't have a problem with that. If you're handing out bottles of water, mm -hmm. you know, and with every bottle of water you get a, a Biden bumper sticker with it, well, that's well, I mean, electioneering. Yeah, but, and I, okay, that's fine. But some of these things are going to, you know, the, the court is going to look at what is like a reasonable or an unreasonable burden and all that. You know, like I hear about this one where the law in Texas maybe is going to give poll watchers the right to apparently randomly film or videotape uh someone voting i mean that's come on that's 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 not good. why really well because they think that these people will apparently mess with the machines or or don't vote i don't know well, why i mean but, but, but i mean because but i'm just saying the the court is not i, I just don't see a scenario where they are going to uphold a law that says that I can go vote tomorrow at my polling place, but Charlie is a poll watcher, so he can come over with his phone and, and film me voting. Yeah. That's, come on. That's bullshit. And it's and the right to vote, the right to vote privately in this country yeah. is not new. That's a long standing yep. tradition that, all people, Republicans, Democrats, black people, white people, that all people have held pretty sacred for years and years and years, right? The old lever machines like they had when I was young had curtains and, and for a reason, you know, yep. because it's private. You are allowed to vote for whoever you want to, and you can tell everybody and their fucking brother on the way home who you voted for, or you can never tell a soul for the rest of your life. It's completely up to you. Yep. And to, to, to take something like that and to completely turn it on its head, I mean, I, I don't I don't see even if you hate the court, I mean that that's that's so radical that it's off the charts. And I mean 
has, if you hate Chief Justice Roberts, fine, but has he ever struck you as a person that unreasonable? He's never struck me that way. No, no. You know, I, and, and you know, I don't even know that Alito would be that 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 way. And and I honestly don't think Justice Barrett would be that way because if she really is the bosom buddy of Justice Scalia, that that's that right there is something that I. <laughs> I could never have seen him going. He was Mr. Privacy in some ways, you know, with police searches and stuff like that. If you didn't like his other stuff, fine. That, that's fine. But you got to at least talk intelligently and factually about his record as a judge. And his record was very pro-criminal, if you will. I mean, you know, he, he, he was very hard on the police about Fourth Amendment things and, and search warrants and all that. So you, you're going to take a guy like that. In, in, the, in his top disciple in Justice Barrett, I, I don't see her abandoning the philosophy that she has right. that she shared with him for some of the stuff is garbage, you know, and it's 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 just going to be garbage. The people have got to make them pay. You I, know? Think I, mean, it, uh, I think she's very anti-abortion, though. And that's why no. that's why everybody, all the women, well, that's why yeah. a lot of progressives were freaked out about her. Well, I mean, that's she wrote. She wrote a lot you know, of, you know, she wrote in in opinion pieces about, you know, abortion. Well, which is fine, but I mean, yeah, it's a, it, to but it's a, it's but a, you see, here, here's the thing. Let me ask you something, Josh, and then we'll go to Alan. I see your hand up, Alan. Uh, hmm. The 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 uh, in, in doesn't the Supreme Court look at precedent? In other words, the Supreme well, sure. Court, I mean, a past yeah. Supreme Court, has said Roe versus Wade. People should be allowed to have abortions. Okay, yeah. it's basically what Roe versus Wade. So, doesn't another court later on down the line does not want to reverse the decision of another court? Basically, yeah. Well, I mean, they they usually, you know, don't like to. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna keep the to their own particular philosophy and and thinking when it gets to them. But I would agree that at times the the Supreme Court will, in its rulings, mm -hmm. make mention of the fact that, hey, by the way, mm -hmm. you know, the three lower courts below us all were in agreement all, that it was constitutional or not constitutional. And, you know, we find no reason to disagree with their logic because sometimes, you know, these courts of appeals have, you know, like, I can't remember, like 21 or 23 judges or whatever, and many of those cases go back and are heard by the full panel. So a lot of eyes have looked at it, mm -hmm. you know, and they do say that we're hesitant to overturn it. I mean, if they believe that it should be, mm -hmm. then they do because it's their job. They are the supreme, you know, court of the land. Yeah. But At, yeah. it's not common. Alan had his hand up, Alan. So I just want to clarify something. It specifically says you cannot give out water. What about Coke or <coughs> or, or or something like that? Does it specifically does it say water? Does it specifically water? say water? I think it says water. Water, no water or food, yeah. I guess Coke would count as food. Uh, I'm sure it's worded as some sort of refreshment or yeah. okay. yeah. beverage. You know, you can't. I, I don't think you can hold us spot in line. Well, well I guess after their current or, position on matters, they wish yeah. they had said Coca-Cola. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I mean, oh, some, some of this stuff, I mean, it's, it's getting pretty, pretty radical. And Coca-Cola you know, makes water too. De DeSanti or something bottled water. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm surprised are, they don't have some more power in politics. You know, giving money to the politicians to change well, that. Well, you know, right? what, what the basic intent of these these laws have been so far is to prevent, really, black voters from voting. I okay? get it. And people, and working people from voting. I mean, when you say that you got to close the polls at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, if an average person has the difference between making a living or going to vote, which are, you know, putting food in their mouth, what, what are right. they going to choose? Well, they, I mean, and, and I'm... Uh, that's what I'm saying is, I mean, the court is going to be, you know, kind of a realist about those sorts of things. I mean, I can imagine those questions coming up. And it is one thing to say, okay, we're going to reduce polling hours to 
5 p.m. or whatever. And in conjunction with that, we're going to expand other avenues of voting, like mail-in or drive-by or whatever. But mm -hmm. they're not. They're curtailing those, too, greatly. And so I, I can imagine if this were at a Supreme Court oral argument that you would get questions from Justice Roberts, from Justice Breyer, uh, maybe from Justice Alito saying, okay, so wait a minute, you, you know, you're, you, you're asking to cut this back, but we do not see some other measure that you took to negate that offset. Mm -hmm. It does indeed look to us like you are decreasing democratic opportunity you know so i mean they're not going to be able to do certain things because i mean like i said before the states do have power to run their elections within okay a well, certain let me window, ask you this as, though you know the election has to be on a certain day those kinds of things since, but it's since not you, unlimited since you're the expert here let's say they take georgia to court and the Supreme Court says, no, the Georgia law is completely unconstitutional, and it inhibits people from voting, and it makes it more difficult for people to vote, blah, 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 blah. Th they throw out Georgia. Here yeah. comes the Texas thing. Mm. Uh, do they have to hear that one again, or would that affect the Texas statute? I mean, it would affect it. It is still... It would affect it, but I don't know that they would hear it again because it would depend. Okay, so if the Texas case had not yet made it to the Supreme Court and it were in some other lower court of appeals yeah. circuit, and the Georgia ruling got there, let's say it happens, okay, and they get there and then they rule on it, you know, the lower courts that would then be ruling on the Texas ones are then going to probably look at that a lot, okay? Mm -hmm. And then let's say they keep, but let's say they, whatever they decide, Texas just doesn't give it up and they still keep pushing it. The Supreme Court doesn't have to hear it. I mean, there's nothing that says they have to hear it. When they go to the last highest court of appeals and lose again, let's say they did, Texas, and then they appeal to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court can say, no, we're not hearing it. We already heard a case that was just like it. No. The, the, the court only hears the cases that it wants Okay, but what to, happens then if somebody comes Trump. along, if somebody comes along, by the way, we lost Tony, and I don't know why he might have been bored. Uh, uh, the, um, uh, if the Texas thing comes along and they go, well, we already re 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 you know, took a case on like that, we're not going to take this one on. Does the Texas law still hold or does it get negated by that? If it lost in the lower courts of appeals and was ruled unconstitutional, and then the Supreme Court says we're not hearing the appeal, oh, okay. then it's unconstitutional. All right. All right. What do you? How I mean, do you that's th what I'm saying. It would depend what yeah. the lower courts had said. If the lower courts throw it out mm -hmm. and it gets to the Supreme Court and they say we're not hearing it, that's the that's the ball game. Yeah, uh, Charlie. Yeah, uh, and uh, it's like with the with the gay marriage uh, ruling that the court had a few years back. That applied to every state. It yeah. doesn't matter if some other state had a di had a different law right. about how gays couldn't get married. I mean, because I mean that's way. right. Well, I mean, what what you have there is you have a, basically when the Supreme Court would make some sort of a a, a ruling in most cases, that's a a precedent that's been set, right? Okay, so that's the equivalent of federal law because the court has said so. As long as it's a national issue. Sometimes it's a state thing or whatever, and they're they're settling some issues. But, I mean, overall, for the most part, the court has said so, and that is the equivalent of a federal law. And, you know, via the supremacy clause of the U.S. Constitution, state law can never trump federal law. You know, a state can never pass a law that violates a federal law. Okay. That's, you know, that's uh, why so, if, if, if Congress passes the uh, mm -hmm. Voter, Voter Rights uh, Act. HB1. Yeah, then this whole thing's moot. Then yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, the uh, passed, they're going to have to get rid right. of the filibuster. Kevin, you had your hand up. So on the early closing at 5 o'clock, can they use the, uh, the labor law that you have to give a person time off in their back pocket as a defense? Well, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you that, know, that's a, that, is that something that they I can, mean, you know, you know, I really well, don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. Off. I mean, you know what I mean? 
is that a defense for them? I don't I don't think it's much of one. No, it I mean, probably isn't because there's a lot of people like like right. I, you know, if I was right. a truck driver like Steve, he could be in a different place where he yeah. can't. I mean, that's right. That's what I'm saying. I mean, the, you know, the, the court will take a but sort that, of, you real, know, you know how those uh, people are. They're going to hold something like that. Yeah. In their back I mean, they will take a, a real world look at, you know, how things are operating. I, I don't think that's much of a defense. I mean, look, I'm sure if you were arguing that the law needs to be constitutional, you would you would raise. Are, that do point. any of these state laws include uh, provisions regarding um, mail in ballots? I'm trying oh, to remember. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of uh, I believe a lot of it's been cut how, way back. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah how, I mean, I believe a lot of it's been curtailed. Greatly. Some of them you got to get a notary to fucking do it. I mean, who's yeah, and you got to get witnesses to sign it where you didn't have to do that before. That's such bullshit. Who's going to get a fucking so? Notary? So obviously, it would I think look to any any decent court like these um, caveats in the law uh, were made to make it difficult for people to vote. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole, you know. Yeah, that's the whole reason is to make it harder to vote. Yeah. yeah, and it's racist. Yeah, we we don't want another we don't want another uh, fixed election like we had here in Atlanta uh, right. or I in, mean, in yes, Georgia. But, I'll tell you something. The governor of Georgia. Do you remember what he's famous for? Yeah. He ran for governor, and he won over Stacey Abrams. Abrams. Yeah. yeah. And he how did he win over her? Closed all the fucking uh, ballot places in the black neighborhoods. That's because he was the secretary, secretary of, state. of state of state, and he could do anything he wanted to the voting yep. process while yep. he was running for governor. For that, yeah. And you want yeah. to talk about an illegal election? That shouldn't even be legal. It shouldn't yeah. be legal. It shouldn't even be legal. Interest. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I know it's time to wrap up, but I mean, it's it's not, you know, a uh, big mystery that. Republican Party would greatly prefer to roll back to the way that we all voted 30 years ago, which was, you know, very, very minute absentee ballots that was basically only used by the military. Okay, mm -hmm. that was it. And everyone else on the day of would drive down to a place and stand in a line, but they would really like to return to that because I'm sure they have a lot of data that proves out what we all know is common sense, which is a lot of the people that would do that are much older, very white, retired, and very loyal to one particular party in most cases, okay? So they would obviously prefer to do that. So I if mean, they want to do that, you know, then extend the voting period to four days. You know, I mean, right. You know, so that, that's, that's, that's why they want to do it, okay? I mean, you know, they want to do it because they want to win. I mean, it's, it's just, you know. Yeah, it's, so extend it's, it to four days, and he won't have to worry about staying up late. Right, you know. It's, well, it's, some, it's somebody stock said stock. somebody said that if uh, the two guys who were running for senator had won in uh, in in uh, Georgia, that they'd never even be trying to pass these laws right now. Very possible, right. you I know, suppose, yeah. because they wouldn't they wouldn't have the argument. And this that, is this know. is saying that hey, look, you know, when when the home when uh, we bat the home team, we want the the walls to be movable. Let's bring them all the way in. So we can hit a lot of home runs, but when the other team bats, let's push them all the way back. Yeah, exactly. Game's over. They want to we win. We got our home right? runs. Go home. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Hey, listen, that's it uh, for tonight. Gosh, uh, thank you all for calling and a very stimulating conversation we've had tonight. I uh, haven't had a lot of people watching it, but I don't know what that's about. I don't know. Maybe I just won't post the show and piss them off. How's that? Uh, you know, they got to listen when it's on or else. I think I just put this on in too many different places. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, Charlie, for having joined us. Uh, thank you very much, Josh, for your participation and your wisdom. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much for being here, as uh, for John Larkin as well. And Kevin, great seeing you here. Great seeing uh, Trucker Steve here. And, of course, uh, Alan, thank you, and thanks to um, uh, to um, um, uh, Tony, uh, who apparently was getting bored or something and left the program. So that eh, what the hell? Anyway, all right. I want you well, all have to a good weekend, everybody. Yeah, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There'll be another citizen panel next. 
with Jack Bishop on the intersection. He'll be using Skype, and the Skype address for that is GabNet Live. Okay? In the meantime, uh, I'll see you, uh, what, Monday we'll do a little pop-up show at 4 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern Time. And then we'll be back again on Tuesday night at 10.30, same time. Same station in life, and in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, everybody out there, wear a damn mask, okay? Stay safe. Bye.